Okay, so this is a game called Suzerain. I have played this for about 20 hours so far uh, and I have really enjoyed it. And um, I'm just going to restart it now and play through it and make a, um, you know, an episodic YouTube series of playing this because it really deserves it. It's such a fascinating game. Nothing like anything I've ever played before, but very, very in-depth political simulator. So I'm going to go to new game. If I resumed it, then uh, I would resume my game, but by going to the new game, I'm going to lose everything I've done. And, uh, that's an interesting aspect of this game as well. You can't save it and then go back and then change your choices or such. You have to start from scratch. And everything you do, you know, you can't change your mind, basically. So, Whew, 20 hours down the drain, but let's do it um, because this is going to be fascinating. So here we go. You are my enslavement and my freedom. You are my flesh burning like a war summer night. You are my country. Azim Hikmet Ram. Nineteen oh eight. Kingdom of Swordland. You opened your eyes to this world. You came from? So where did I come from? I came from a wealthy family in the city of Lachavan, a middle-income family in the city of Holsword, or an impoverished family in the city of Dare. Well, I'm going to decide middle-income family. I'm not rich, but I'm not impoverished, so let's go with the middle. All of these choices um, will play out through your story through the game um, and this is what I'm going to decide right now your parents named you Anton as the only child of a diligent civil servant you lived quite an ex uh, it's quite an ordinary childhood life was not bad you were lucky enough to attend a well-known public school a frequent fights broke out at the rain family home he's made you feel uneasy years passed During the history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. <laughs> you did not fully understand. You were happy you had the day off, or you were somewhat worried? Well, hey. I didn't understand, and I was happy to have the day off. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, I, I didn't understand. 1926. Some 18 years later, I believe. After graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose Law at Holsall State University, Economics at Lachavan Business School, or History. The Dare University of Culture. Well, I came from the middle class, so I uh, I feel lack of an economics seems to be the most sensible. So let's go for this. During the first year, you attended a lecture with David Whiskey. He was a well-known diplomat from the Foreign Ministry and the son of the President. After observing the hall in silence, he explained why a market economy is the best option for Swordland. Better option, sorry. He argued for a system where prices for goods and services are determined by the open market. My only concern, to be honest, is passing the exams. I agree in principle, or I question, but I just need to pass the exams, right? So past the exam. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest. Along with your best friend Peter Vecton, you decided to protest or avoid confrontation. 
Well, I'm a... Uh... I'm naturally the kind of person who will avoid confrontation, so I'm going to go with all. I heard a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Luderin declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. You quickly made your way towards the dormitory, avoiding the scene. I did, exactly, as they said. As you entered the room, you heard screams coming from the outside. Tried to bury yourself under the sheets, or you tried to go out and see? Ah, I'm gonna hide. I'm a wimp. But the screams echoed. <laughs> it was a gloomy year. The majority, oh, October the 10th, 1927. The majority of the students and teachers displayed their opposition. Thus, Lakovin became a target for the military regime. He didn't want to stay idle and decided to join the Human Rights Group, Student Council, Political Debate Group. Oh, jeez. Um... I'm going to go with a political debate group, I think. The dozens of debates helped you own your oratory skills, whilst also helping you grow your network. Even though the debates were pretty heated between you and different groups, you all grew from sharing ideas. In one of the meetings, Pera introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who is a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her intelligence, her beauty, diligence. Ah, uh, I'm going to say intelligence. I think intelligence is the one to go for. The politically charged environment led you to join the Red Youth, the Socialists, the Young Swords, the Nationalists. Stay away from any political organization. Socialists and nationalists will stay away. I think uh, I'm gonna stay away. June 2nd, 1928. The radio relayed that the communist general Reichard surrounded Luderin and his troops, demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Swordland was plunged into chaos. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope. and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. Chaos must end. Charismatic Colonel Takin Sol orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran as a presidential candidate. In the first ever elections, I voted for the United Sutherland Party, or didn't vote. I'm staying apolitical at this point, so uh, I didn't vote. The United Sutherland Party won the election by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. A devastating civil war broke out in the neighboring country of Wellen. The distinguished major, Iosef Lancia, ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. 
It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gumrun Outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it. <laughs> sorry. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You. Well, here we go. I mean, this is an important sort of moral question early on. Refugees had made it beyond the border fence. What do I do? As a... As a conscript, as an army person, as a teenager called up to war. The right thing I should do is escort them back. Um, according, according to my um, role, I suppose, at the time. But uh, I could let them slip through. You know what? I don't want to make a fuss right now. I'm going to escort them back. Refugees were in despair when they realised you were taking them back to the border. Screams and protests ensured, uh, ensued as they were restrained. You delivered them to the border guards. After several months of military service, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. You and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessings of her parents, a ceremony was held in Holsord. During the same year, you were offered a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. It was important to start your career on a good foot, so you accepted it. Working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. The financial conversation was too great to pass up, or it was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. Well, and, and, and then here we go again for a, for a new uh, decision here. So, um, you know. What is the aim of the game? What are we trying to achieve? Um, well, yes, working for the ruling party is the easiest path to power. Yes, a financial conversation was too great to pass up. But it was also the best opportunity to change the country for the better. As a politician, I suppose I have to go for the latter, so let's go for that. You became the economics assistant to one of the most experienced members of the assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late at work investigating hundreds of pages of economic reports. You were climbing the ladder. September 1933. This is some three years on. Tarkin Sol strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country. As the massive economic boom continued, and people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came, and it was decided. President Tarkin Sol was elected once more. April the 2nd, 1934, a year later, the new five-year plan and the subsequent work regarding finances put you under a lot of pressure. But your significant contribution to the economic strategy triggered an invitation to meet President Tarkin Sol himself, who offered you a key position. 
you were to become the youngest member of the assembly. I accepted right away. Or I accepted with doubt. No, I accepted right away. This is a great opportunity, so let's go for it. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You did alloys, allies even. So you brought Petter as your right hand man. Petter Vecton, the man who was your friend in college of course. The birth of your son, Frank, provided a brief moment of joy and relief. You sacrificed work to spend time with your family. I'm sorry. Or you sacrifice family to improve your position in the party. I feel like I'm a career oriented person, so I sacrifice my family to improve my position. Along with Petter, the best mate, of course. You have done great things to cement your position in the party. Meanwhile at home, Monica and Frank felt your absence. At the same time, President Sol increased his authority over oh, me. <laughs> President Sol increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. The cracks began to show. President Sol barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. This is October 1945. A good 12 years on since his last election, since his second election. Third and fourth win. Look at that, he kept winning. That's a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. That's a long time in power. I mean, we're talking 20... No, sorry, we're talking 12 years plus. Over the past year, people have grown discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a united Swordland Party Congress became louder as the leadership struggle started to brew. You, watched from the sidelines, kept supporting the president or joined the internal opposition. All I want change, so I think uh, I joined the opposition. You gave your support to Ewald Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate who was the main contender for a party leadership. Meanwhile, in a desperate effort to secure votes before Congress, President Saul was meeting party members one by one. But he didn't approach you. August 1946. Party Congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Swordland decorated in every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. He voted for Tarkin Sol, the incumbent, or Ewald Alfonso, the, uh, essentially the guy up against him. Well, I'm voting for Alfonso because I'm, I've had enough of Sol and his 12, 15, 20 years, however long it is, of uh, machines. September the 1st, 1946. The efforts bore fruit as the contentious leadership vote was won by Ewald Alfonso. During the Congress, Sol announced his, re <clears throat> his retirement from politics. He knew the structure he had established was to stay. The country had become increasingly author authoritarian. You were either happy that Saul was finally leaving, troubled by the departure of Saul, 
or you, or you didn't care about who's in charge. <laughs> well, to be honest, personally, I don't really care, but, um, you know, uh, I'm going to play this game this time around as quite a staunch um, anti-government person. So, I'm going to say that we're happy that Saul is gone. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Diana. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. The United Southern Party was under the new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. I joined the party effort and campaigned for him, or I did my best not to help him. No, look, I'm, uh, I'm up for him. Yeah, I'm supporting him at this point, so let's go for it. Nineteen forty-nine. During the general elections, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sketch scandal with his secretary. He was replaced by the strong opposition figure, Friends Richter, but the damage had been done. The extensive privatization program proposed by Ewald Alfonso secured an election victory for the United Southern Party. Over the next years, you did your best to order in order to make your Southern a better place. Tried all that was necessary to climb the ladder, but dedicated yourself to the party and its success. Well, I'm trying to make a change and my heart and heart I think I have to do my best to make Southern a better place I could take this path to climb the ladder but I think let's let's try and let's try and stick true to my beliefs I'm going to do my best to make Southern a better place 1951 the presidency of Alwald Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bid for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered the law opposition efforts to win. Excuse me. You were. Uh, you either thought your party could not survive another crisis, you were worried about the recession. Or you were worried that your reputation would be tarnished with Alfonso. Hmm. I'm concerned about the recession. That's my main concern right now. Because that's going to affect everyone. Together with Pera, my best mate, your presence in the USP grew and you became the face of a new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You blamed Alfonso for the crisis on TV, bribed and extorted Alfonso's inner circle, advised Alfonso to step I can't, I'm going on TV. I'm going to blame him. The media backlash prompted President Alfonso to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. The party eventually voted you in because of your charisma as leader. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Petter, your best mate, as your running mate. It was your turn. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms or preserve national values. Hey, look, we need change, so democratic reforms is on the cards. 
The people are tired of empty promises. We need fundamental change in our institutions and government. A solid and transparent democracy awaits us. Brothers and sisters, a new constitution and a new age is upon us. The broadcast ended. On election day, millions went out to cast their votes. November the 5th, 1953. It was time to face the truth. Chapter 1 President Rain Oh, and let me choose what I look like. Okay. I need to look very noble, but somewhat kind of slightly, um, different to everyone else. So I think, you know, I like, I like the sort of curtains there, that one, this one, let's go with this one. Facial hair. Mm. I'm trying to look a little bit different from my first playthrough, so that's why I'm not going with the, the bald and uh, goatee that I could. Um, oh, a nice strong beard. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, that dude looks good. Attire. Oh. Oh, I think with that look, I think it's got to be the older. Uh, yeah. It's got to be that look, hasn't it? Cool, calm, sophisticated man. Accessories, glasses, smoke. No, nothing. Background. Well, I think the first one really, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. There we go. Anton Rain, the fourth president of Soldland. There he is, man. He looks like a nice guy. Good guy. Guy to get things done. Here we go. Bon. I'll not be able to change how he looks. Let's do it. As Anton Rain, you have made many promises to the people of Swordland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. Economy. Swordland's economy has been based on a planned doctrine since its formation under the former president, Ewald Alfonso, an active free market. Now the country finds itself in between two different economic systems. We have a free market or the planned economy. Well, sounds like it all went to shit under Alfonso. So, but it went well to start with, didn't it? But it did go to shit. Planned economy. Free market. Let's go with the planned economy. I think I think Alfonso well no, but wait, Alfonso did push for changes, but um planned economy was under Talking Sol. I will continue with Alfonso's plans for a free market. Diplomacy, the intensifying global rivalry between capitalists like Asia in the West, which I think we can call America, and communist United Cantana in the East, which I think we can call China, um, is opening new diplomatic possibilities. Swordland could take steps to align itself closer to one. What an interesting situation that is. You know, you basically got America or China, and I feel. I mean, on my first playthrough, I went to America. Um, and I feel at this point in time, I mean, you know, in our life, in our life, um, in our lifetime, aligning with America is, is the right thing to do, and especially considering this is based in the fifties. So, let's go with America. That's the worst. Immigration. In recent years, the bloodished Wezek and Agdolian immigrants flocked to Swordland due to relaxed immigration laws enacted by Alfonso. 
As a result, tensions between swords and immigrants have been increasing, keeping immigration relaxed or tight immigration. And well, again, uh, it's a tough one, isn't it? I think we need to tighten immigration. If it's been relaxed, but things have gone to shit, then I think we need to tighten it. So let's tighten it. Term focus. We have also promised to focus on a certain extensive subject within our first term. The people expect us to solve the negative situations within this topic whilst providing an overall improvement to the related policies. Health, education, law, military. Wow. Life expectancy has dropped. Education has massive gaps. Law enforcement is crime. Military. I think we need law enforcement. I think we need, you know, we can't have anything unless we are based in a country that has law and proper law enforcement. So, law enforcement is my choice. Your promises will be remembered and they have consequences. Are you sure about your decisions? Yes. And that, I think, is where I'm going to stop it today. That's half an hour, thereabouts. Thank you for watching. We have a long way to go in this game. And um, that is literally just the prologue. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, um, a very interesting series. So, um, Catch you later. Cheers.